Good everyone, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be talking about the Salesforce flows for the service. Um, so before I uh, dive into this uh, specific episode, right, I expect everyone knows what flows are about uh, because I won't be covering flows, right? Because uh, as I said when, before I started this uh, certification course that um, you need to have admin before you go and take this one, right? So I expect you guys to know um, things about flows. If you're not comfortable, I would highly encourage you to go to Trailhead to train yourself on flows, right? Okay, now, why do we need to talk about flows, right, in Service Cloud or in Service Space? Okay, um, let me give you a very classic example, right? Um, I run a brewing company, right? So we've been in brewing business for the past, um, say, um, uh, for two years, right? And as a part of the brewing business, right, our uh, customers, they like our beers, um, so recently we introduced a zero person lager, right? Because given the fact that uh, in New Zealand, I'm just uh, giving you a real information about New Zealand, uh, but my beer company is fictitious, right? So um, so um, in New Zealand, what I've noticed, right? There is a sharp increase in the demand for zero person beer. Uh, you might find that bizarre, but apparently I guess people wanted to uh, experience a, a drink with their mates, but at the same time, they don't prefer to get drunk, right? And you can pretty much drink it during the work time because it's, it's a non-alcoholic, right? What could go wrong? Um, because it's better than, definitely better than those garbage Coca-Cola and Pepsi with sugary stuff they had. I, you know, I just prefer <laughs> to drink water if I have to choose between a Coca-Cola or a water, right? Uh, but 0% is pretty good for you. Um, um, you know, yeah, that's that's my opinion. <laughs> all right, okay, sorry, I digress. Okay, so based on that, right, based on the information what I provide, all right, um, our, our uh, uh, demand has gone up, our beer's demand has gone up, so that, uh, but, but that has caused a problem for our service agents, right, because they are constantly getting a lot of uh, calls regarding uh, the service requests. Some of them are, are calling to ask, hey, um, when do you guys actually ship um, uh, the stout 0% lager or do you guys have any plan to um, brew those things in the future? Uh, some of the customers calling us for a uh, refund because some of them uh, are getting uh, broken uh, bottles during the shipment. So we probably have to chase that up with the courier company to see what's going on. So. Um, so the, the agents are getting overwhelmed, right? And But the problem is not about being overwhelmed. It's beyond that. So I'll give you one simple scenario. Customer called, and one of the uh, service agents, who's pretty new, he picked up the call, and customer said, hey, uh, my name is so-and-so. I'm your regular customer. And so last time I called you guys to explain to uh, you guys that uh, out of 24 beers, which I've ordered, Six have arrived faulty. Can I get a refund? Or if you can't give me a refund, can I have a replacement? Pretty simple, right? You must be thinking, all right, that's a pretty simple case. But unfortunately, David, uh, you know, he didn't see much history of the previous interaction. For whatever reason, he missed it. And he, he asked the customer the same the question, hey, can you verify yourself? Um, so have you, what all the steps the previous agents have done? That absolutely frustrated the customer. He said, hey, you don't know what I've said last time. Don't you record anything? Uh, what's going on? I mean, I don't want to repeat myself 50 times. It's just frustrating. Already I've spent 20 minutes on the call. Now you want me to repeat it. And imagine a customer who called 10 times. I'll give you a simple example, right? You call a water phone service, right? For whatever replacement, you call three times. And imagine if you call again and repeat everything what you've done, you'll be extremely pissed. I, I'm, I mean, I'll be. Um, so that's one of the problems. So imagine you have a flow in place where everything is a guided step, right? So where you can see, okay, um, the, so you can pretty much uh, look at the, um, you know, the, the guided process and assist the customer. Or sometimes what happens, right? Agent is extremely tired for whatever reason, right? You're probably having a bad day, or you might have taken like 50 calls a day and the customer calls in for saying, hey, uh, I got an issue with a courier. Can you trace that up for me? 
uh, the courier information. Uh, can you give me the courier number? Because it's been four days since I've uh, called back for the status of my order. And you guys last time said, oh, if we shipped it. And But unfortunately, I forgot to ask the courier number last time or the tracking number, right? Um, so agent was kind of distracted. He said, oh, okay, let me have a look. Um, I don't see any courier information. I think it will be available. Oh, then he kind of misguided and said, oh, I don't see courier information. Probably seems to me that your items has not been shipped. Let me reship it again. That's the mistake he did because he was not paying attention. So instead of providing the, the you know, required uh, solution, right, or giving a tracking number because customer was 100% sure that it's been shipped. Uh, but he was not sure of the tracking number because for whatever reason, you know, he forgot to ask. Uh, and this agent was not pretty sure about it. So um, that kind of a miscommunication, right, caused a lot of frustration. It's not good for the brand, right? So that's where this, uh, you know, the service flow comes in the picture. And we're going to look at very important feature called actions and recommendation for agents. Um, so we're going to make use of that. Now you must be wondering what the heck is actions and recommendations, right? Uh, so actions and recommendations are a component in a console and standard navigation app, right? Um, so you can configure uh, pretty much uh, steps which can start the screen flows, uh, you know, auto launch flows and quick actions using actions and recommendation. So what we're gonna do, right? Uh, we will be, I will show you the actions and recommendations I've created and I've created a few flows, right? Uh, just a dummy flow, but like I said, I won't be explaining much about the flows, but I'll show you anyways what I've done. And I'm going to walk you through actions and recommendations, and we're going to drop that to the page, right, uh, using Page Builder. So, and then we'll see that in action. Pretty simple, right? It's a hands-on, pretty simple. Okay, the first thing, right, I'll show you a few flows, what I have, right, which we're going to make use of it. Um, it's nothing fancy, just a very basic screen flow, because I wanted to mimic the process so you guys have an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, change of delivery address. Absolutely ridiculously simple flow. Nothing happens behind the scene, right? It's just a screen flow. Uh, it's just a screen component, a few components on top of it, right? Um, nothing much, right? So, okay, so we're going to make, you know, a few of these flows, right? And uh, log a call, um, verify a caller. So we're going to make use of all of this, okay? So what we're going to do, I will go to actions recommendation. Um, so go to the setup, right? If you do not know how to go to setup, this is a Gecko icon, uh, and go to setup. And now sometimes you must be wondering, right? Ah, oh, I feel overwhelmed. I don't even know how to go to setup. Don't you worry, right? You know, I've been working on Salesforce space for quite a while, and at times I still get confused, right? Uh, with certain options, I might have forgotten about that. Uh, take it as an opportunity to revisit those things, right? You don't have to feel overwhelmed or or frustrated, right? If you're learning, right, every day. I mean, I'm learning every single day, right? So, and Salesforce platform is evolving. So, I mean, you know, it's great that we all are part of the, the Salesforce space, right? So we all can help each other. So that's the way I look at it. So I digress. So uh, go to the setup here and I can go to actions. Um, so actions recommendations. Oh, sorry. Uh, my spelling sucks. Right, actions recommendations. Okay, so go here. Um, I've already created one. Okay, so I'll show you. Uh, if you if you don't have one, you can go to the new deployment here and create it. So I will show you how it looks like uh, based on what I've done. So go to edit. So the screen uh, flow is pretty much the same. So the first screen you will get this uh, is this. We put the label, give a meaningful label, please. I just gave a, you know, some dummy label name. Um, select the flows and quick, uh, quick actions and recommendations. Go to next. Now here you select an object. I've selected a case. Obviously I'm dealing with the case. Um, if you're dealing with something else, you, you just select that one, uh, other object. And now uh, what I'll do, I'm just gonna go to the default, right? And in the default, I have added these few options here. A view verify color order parts reschedule delivery log a call. I just drag and drop right you can drag and drop if you want so that's what I did okay um, nothing fancy here so this will call flow behind the scene right just gonna go next and keep the default option here right and just gonna go and um, general settings not much strategy settings it's like the case I just you know selected this offer strategy that's pretty much I've done 
um, and you're going to do save. Okay, it's pretty simple, right? So what I'll do, I'll go to the case, right? And we will imitate some behavior, right? Now, before we imitate, I just wanted to show you something because you might ask, how do you manage to get that option, right? I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so you might see, right? Why is this action recommended? But I don't see it. Well, that's pretty simple because all you have to do, go to the Scarecog icon, uh, edit page, right? The one which I mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, and uh, just go action recommendation, drag and drop here, and then go to the settings here. And then, um, hang on. Sorry. Uh, and choose the right recommendation, right? You might have a few. So uh, pick and choose the right one, right? Okay. So that's great. So let's say I'm a customer. I'm calling a customer service agent. So David picks up the call. Uh, the first step, right? So, and also you might have a service process in place. The first thing you might be, you might have a process like you always have a verified caller. Okay. Now, when you look at the screen, right, you can see that these are the actions which as an agent I should be taking. Okay. I have a verified caller. So let's say I'm calling to uh, request for a reschedule in delivery of my, uh, for my beer, right? So what I'll do, okay. So when I call the first thing David picks up, is a David is a new agent, right? Um, he's new to the job, so and all they would be instructed is follow the screen. So follow the actions you have to follow um, based on your conversation. You just have to mix and match, right? The first step is always a verified caller. Okay, so um, David calls and says, "Hey, can you give me the contact number?" So he said, "My name is Peter, right? So I'm, I'm Peter. I'm a customer, and callback number just in case if you hung up for whatever reason can happen, right?" Um, though it doesn't look like a good service um, uh, statement to say, hey, give me your uh, callback number just in case I hung up. And if I'm a customer, I say, why the heck you wanted to hang up on me, right? I mean, you just have to change your uh, the label, the wording, right? But you get the point. Now, the verified caller is done. And so, and I'll say, okay, I wanted to reschedule it. So, and I'll ask, okay, can you tell me the delivery date? When you want to reschedule it, I will say 22nd, please. So 22nd. And so, okay. So I will say, hang on a second. Let me log a call to say, Peter uh, called to reschedule to uh, 22nd Feb, right? And I'll save it. Now, for whatever reason, right, Peter hung up, right? And the customer said, okay. And David forget, you know, for whatever reason, David decides not to do anything with the case. He moved on with another case, right? So, and then Peter calls back again. And when Peter calls back again, Mark, a new agent, I mean, he's pretty experienced. He picks up the call. And the, the soon the Peter called, right, Mark knew that by looking at the screen, he shouldn't be verifying a caller because it's already been verified as a part of a business user. But he just asks, oh, I'm Peter calling and, and then you can add the mark. Uh, yeah, he might ask, okay, can you give me your first name and last name or whatever, right? So you shouldn't be asking, can you give me your callback number? I mean, I knew that you might argue that, oh, this is not a very good process because what if a fake guy calls, right, pretending he's a Peter? Yeah, I agree that. I'm just trying to explain the step, which you don't have to follow it. It may sound like a bizarre step, but just for the sake of argument, let's assume that you don't have to verify it, okay? Now he can look at the history to see what's going on and he can see, all right, okay. So last time Peter called, so there was a reschedule happen and he'll probably look at the call records and say, oh, okay, Mr. Peter, you called last time and you wanted to reschedule, right? Obviously as a customer, I say, yeah, 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 that's right. That's what I called last time. And a customer will be kind to say, yeah, we rescheduled uh, for whatever reason, blah, blah. So any Mark will say, oh, how can I help you this time? He say, oh, I wanted to, uh, change my delivery address okay so mark will say that's pretty sweet we can do that for you right now just give me a second so mark will, mark will do go to actions go to add um and say okay so change the delivery address so mark will say so deliver to your name mr peter say so, yes that's my name street address blah 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 blah, blah, blah right and that's it Everything's done, right? Now, that's, um, 
you can look at the history, see that there is a change of delivery address happened. Next time when Peter calls, a new agent can look at the screen and say, oh, the delivery address has been changed. So you see the advantage of um, having uh, actions recommendation, right? Instead of remembering, you know, not knowing where to look for the knowledge base, not sure what to do, right? If you have this in place, right, it just kind of uh, helps the agent to uh, deliver a better customer experience at the end of the day right a customer service agent main role is to provide solution okay and uh, and providing the right solution uh, so that customer don't have to call back again or empowering a customer so that they can find themselves solution right whichever works uh the best for the customer okay so this is pretty much i wanted to talk about um so we got a lot to cover though right so uh after this um I need to talk about knowledge base, uh, basics and knowledge base setup, uh, have um, social customer service strategies. Um, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. It's just pretty much a theory session, right? I'm not demonstrating deep learning or machine learning. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about the Salesforce mobile app a bit, uh, Salesforce cloud, which is going to basics. It's going to walk through a few things here and there, right? Metrics we're going to talk about. Um, Large data volume, so that's pretty interesting because I already covered that as a part of um, my um, platform developer too. So I will link that same video. It's pretty much the same. There's nothing change when it comes to large data volume, right? Uh, then we're going to talk about the web chat basics as well, right? And then service essential features, right? A um, lot to cover. Unfortunately, I've been lazy. I'll, I'll be very honest. Because it's summer in New Zealand, I now get very lazy during the summertime. I'm not very proactive in summer because I don't like heat. That's the main thing. I can't handle heat the last three days. It's been freaking hot, like around 30 degrees. And I didn't go out of the house, to be honest, because I hate the heat sensation on my skin. I mean, I'm extremely productive when I, you know, I live close, when it's closer to winter uh, because I get proper sleep. In summer, I can't sleep properly. My appetite goes down i'm not a summer guy right so just i lack motivation in summer summer is depressing for me but i i push myself either way right because you got to do things you got to do things but summer is the worst time of the year for me um and i remember you know back in the days i used to tell my mate hey i'm i can i should probably move to our thing right where the temperature is always cold right maybe somewhere in scandinavia um we'll see right i mean Unfortunately, in New Zealand, we don't have much longer summer uh, from next month. Uh, autumn will kick uh, kick in, then temperatures started to cool down a bit, and that's the time where I really like it. And then in June, we get hit uh, hit by winter. Uh, in my city, we don't get snow. Like, it's, it's, it's warm in my town, like minus one you get. That's not a really winter. But if you get – but I do go to uh, snow. There's a snow place, Wakapapa. It's my favorite. Yeah, so New Zealand is very beautiful during winter time, you know. So especially if you wanted to see more snow, the South Island is the best place to visit. But we do get snow in North Island near the mountains, so which is pretty exciting. Uh, the time to celebrate for me when it when when it comes closer to winter. Right, sorry, digress, but just you know, thought to mention. You must be wondering why this guy is not pretty um, punctual when it comes to videos recording. Uh, mind you, guys, right? I started my new work. Uh, a week ago, so I'm just getting used to that. Um, uh, like I said, it's one of the big four. Um, uh, it's interesting, great team. Uh, then writing my book, creating a course for identity access management. That's going well. It's a pretty complex course, so I'm just making sure I deliver the best content. And then on top of this, I'm doing this. So, you know, trying my best. To, and plus, to make it worse, it's a bloody summer. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, episode. Have a great evening. Take care. Adios.